What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the Dell Optiplex that I kind of put together a few months ago where we basically just put some very basic upgrades into it to make it gamer ready. But today we're going to be doing some part hustling to find some reasonable upgrades that doesn't make this thing completely over budget and crazy, but also gives you a good idea of what you can reasonably put in these types of machines to really take your gaming to the next level above what we did previously. And speaking of spending your money reasonably, I've got a video sponsor here that'll help you activate Windows at a reasonable price. Let's go. Today's video sponsor is scdkey.com, an online marketplace that specializes in CD keys to activate Windows 10, 11, and many other game titles and etc. I've partnered again with them today in this video to give you guys the best deal possible when it comes to activating your Windows installations. If you use my promo code HUST upon checkout, which is linked in the video description, you can receive a massive 25% discount on your Windows 10, 11, and even Office Pro keys and game keys. Once you've made your purchase, head on over to Windows activation screen, click change product key, and simply paste in the key received digitally upon purchase. Click through the next activation menu screens and you are done. Now you have a fully licensed and activated copy of Windows on your new system. Again, that promo code is HUST on checkout to get the full 25% discount. All right, guys, so before we get into part hunting, just a quick overview of what we got here on the table. And by the way, check out the video of this particular build in its current state that I have done previously. But what we have here is an RX 560 that we bought for about $80 on eBay as basically our graphics upgrade to allow us to do gaming. But the good thing about that card was obviously that we didn't require any external power so that is something we'll have to address as we do upgrades here. Additionally, we also added an SSD. We've got a 512 gigabyte SSD that I got tucked in here. I'm having struggling to pull out. Basically, those were the two major components that we added to basically make this a gaming PC. And as you know from that video, if you've seen it, it does pretty decently well at low settings. But what we're after here today is really taking things to the next level. So obviously, if we want to do anything in terms of high performance gaming, we're going to have to upgrade the GPU and it's going to have to be one that requires external power. So what we're looking at doing is upgrading the power supply, getting rid of this RX 560 that we spent $80 on so we can retract kind of that in terms of money spent as well as we're going to rip out the CPU here and that'll be in the later video when we actually do the upgrades but we're going to be looking for an i7 4770 or 4790 to be a direct drop-in replacement to basically give us a lot more CPU headroom to accommodate a bigger graphics card. Lastly, we have eight gigs of RAM in here that just came default with the system. Just gonna look at doubling that up to 16 gigs, which should give us plenty enough to cover some higher end gaming compared to what we have right now. So that basically covers the overview of what we're working with currently today and what we're gonna be going after. Let's jump over onto eBay. We're gonna be looking for some used parts that we can fill in this PC and make it a pretty solid gaming rig, hopefully for something around the 350 to $400 mark. All right, guys, so we're over here on eBay. We're going to start with that because I really want to target going after reasonable upgrades. If I haven't already mentioned, we're, that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to overspend or just put some kind of crazy hardware like a 3080 Ti into Optiplex. That's just absolutely nuts, if you ask me. So what we're really after is just a bargain buy. Basically, we're going to part hunt. And secondly, we want something that's going to be a good balance with that Optiplex. And I, I got to thinking, I really think the 6000 series Radeon cards are going to be a good fit for it. Might present a little bit of a CPU bottleneck, that remains to be seen. It should work too. I did reference a Toasty Bros video where they actually put a 6000 series card into a Dell Optiplex. That was kind of a, at least a securing moment for me to understand that that should work. Nvidia, yes, you could technically go with that, but to be flat honest, it's gonna command the traditional Nvidia tax. What did it cost? Everything. And we're trying to do things that are reasonable, I think we would get more price to performance if we stuck with Radeon, so that's what we're gonna be doing. So let's take a look here. We're gonna go over to eBay. I'm just gonna type in 6600 XT. Again, I don't think I'm gonna go beyond that into the 67 or 6800 range, just because I think that would present a bit more of a CPU bottleneck and would just be a bit too much for what we're after. So let's see here. All right, so we've got our buy now format plugged in where conditions are going to be new and used cards not for parts and we've got the price plus shipping lowest first and the first one we have here is a 6600 which we don't want next one we have is a power color a hellhound and the 6600 for 189 dollars so let's take a look here so i really like how this person immediately off the bat is showing some 3d mark scores that's really cool that they went the extra mile so somebody who knows their stuff and is trying to show that this is a reliable card. So that's really cool. Yeah, this card is, you know, nothing super amazing to look at in terms of 
aesthetic, but we're not so much after that because it's a Dell Optiplex build anyway. Hopefully that backplate doesn't stick up real high. It also almost looks like a decorative backplate anyway. I think we might be able to make this work. Ideally, maybe something that's even cheaper that would be something without a backplate. I don't know what this etched in number here means, 208. That kind of makes me think it could have been crypto mined on. Let's see what the actual auction says, but it hasn't been open, which is good. And I really like that he took this specific picture here. So let's see here. Tested working past 3D Mark stress test, no box or accessories, 30 day warranty. So that's really cool. The person is actually standing by their part, shipping locally from Columbus, Ohio. So within the United States should be able to get it quickly. Let's see any other descriptions here, things that we already read. So I don't really see any particular reason to not go with this car. Card. It was pretty much a quick find. I went down the list here and we could see that the cards just start really going up in price and there really isn't much offering. There's no reason to go spend 30, 40, 50 more dollars on the same card when you're going to get the same performance result. That's my opinion. And if the listing like this one does looks pretty good, let's just go with it. All we got to do now is find a power supply that will accommodate this card, which pretty much all we need is about a 500 watt power supply that is gonna be of good standing. And then we're gonna need uh, an, a power supply adapter so that way we can adapt an A pin to the, the motherboard as well as some more RAM. I'm gonna pull one of the sticks out here and see what we got. That way we can just match it all up. All right, so here we've got the DIMM and it's a four gig SK Hynix. PC3-12800, so I would say it'd probably be best to match up the specs of the RAM if you possibly can. And that's what we got here. Focus, 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 there we go. So I think what we'll do here is I'm gonna actually do a search on this type of memory and see what we come up with. Here we go, what's this? It's Micron memory, so I mean, I think that should still be fine if we mix Micron and SK Hynix. 12800 memory, but I don't see why this wouldn't work. Actually, it looks like they're just selling a bunch of different ones. This is actually the same exact brand. So yeah, okay, so they're just selling a bunch. This should work. So while we're on eBay too, one last thing I wanna buy on eBay, and it's usually a good spot for this type of part, is the eight pin to 24 pin adapter. So what that means is, actually, let me grab a power supply. Okay, so with this power supply here that I've got just pulled over, we got your standard motherboard ATX 24 pin. If I get that to focus here, focus, focus, focus. It's trying to focus on my face. Basically with this power supply is we got a 24 pin that's normally used for your kind of aftermarket PC builds where you would use like a Asus motherboard, Gigabyte motherboard, whatever, and they require 24 pin power. But with these Dell Optiplexes, the 9020s, I think in all the rest below, minus some older generation ones, require an eight pin power motherboard connection. So what we need to do is we need to basically just buy a part that adapts a 24 pin that comes with your normal kind of standard ATX power supply like this. So that way we can power the motherboard. These are pretty simple parts. They're usually about eight, 10 bucks. Let's see what we got here. And right at the very top, here 64 sold this person looks like to be a big seller of these things they're pretty popular i've used them before in other dell optiplex videos they're reliable i would say don't worry about this and motherboard power for dell optiplexes doesn't really pull a heck of a lot of power anyway all right over here on pc part picker i'm going to just do like a new build and really i'm only using it to basically find me a power supply so what we want here is honestly we're just targeting a wattage of like five to six hundred watts total that's all we need. And I'm gonna put that in my filter here. We'll do that, right? 500 to 750 watt. Okay, that's fine. And let's just do price lowest first. Obviously some of these ones are really cheap ones that we wanna kind of stay away from. Here we go. <laughs> Man, Thermaltake must be really putting out a lot of these Thermaltake Smart BM2 power supplies. I've had these used in several of my builds recently, and they're good power supplies. This is a 550 watt. It's a bronze rated power supply. It's good up on the power supply tier list. So basically it checks all the boxes that we need. And this one coming in at $54 from Newegg. So my bad, I totally skipped over CPU upgrade for this system. We throw a 6600 XT into it. With an i5, it's gonna be a nightmare. So let's go over back to eBay real quick and get our CPU. Like I said earlier, we're gonna be looking for the i7 4770, 4790. Ideally a 4790, because it clocks up a little bit faster than the 4770. I think we can still get these for a really good price on eBay. So let's see what we got here. Okay, 
coming in at wow 40 bucks this is really really cool so 4790 well you want to make sure that it's not the 4790s those were different cpus for different use cases and they actually are way slower in terms of clock speed so make sure you're not buying a 4790s actually what i'm talking about is something like this right here and as you can see the clock speeds are very slow compared to the other ones so make sure you don't buy those and you buy just the core 4790 that has a 3.6 gigahertz base clock speed what we see right here and the listing we see all of our processes are professionally tested and inspected for any defects blah 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 seller with really high ratings 47.90 for 40 dollars i mean that's a killer deal one of the mention here too guys it looks like this seller is actually an e-recycler so that's usually a good indicator of a known good working part mainly these types of companies take in parts that are from used working systems or refurbish them and then resell them obviously and test them before they go out so it's always a good reassurance to buy from these types of companies when you're looking for buying used parts all right so let's take a look at our total now that we got everything figured out we can bring up a calculator here we've got fifty dollars total spent with the dell optiplex core machine originally we put in a thirty dollar ssd which we're going to carry over we're not carrying over the previous gpu so we've went and got a new one for that rx 6600 xt that was 190 dollars we needed a power supply which is $55. We needed a power supply adapter, another $10. We also upgrading a RAM for another $10. And buying this processor here that we have last on our list, that was another $40. 385 total dollars spent from bringing this Optiplex in as a original just basic office computing rig to now something that will be a powerhouse gaming machine. So that covers basically the parts hunt of the reasonable upgrades as we're calling it in this video for this Dell Optiplex. If you aren't sure where we started from to begin with with this Dell Optiplex, well, I got a video right here for you that you need to check out, but stay tuned for the upcoming video where we're gonna get all these parts on order, get them installed and benchmark this system to see what kind of powerhouse machine we just will have on our hands. Thanks for tuning into this one though, guys. I appreciate your time and I will catch you in the next one.